Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thank you for sticking around. Um, the just kind of we'll use this segment to kind of wrap up a little bit about what's going on with the the candidates in the RNC. So, so Ryan's previous comes out and basically agrees with everybody, and I think he's probably ha- he probably has to agrees with all this all this complaining and all this uh, um, uh, back and forth. But do do these campaigns, especially especially a, a Donald Trump, to a lesser extent, Ben Carson, because I think Ben Carson, even though he's a quote unquote outsider, he's running a more traditional campaign even than Donald Trump is. Donald Trump, and, and this is something from last week, so I don't mean to, to bigfoot you on this, one, Donald Trump isn't in Iowa. He doesn't have anybody in Iowa. He's got four people, basically. He has hardly anything going in Iowa organizational wise, unlike Ben Carson, who's had billboards and um, his campaign staff and folks here for months and months and months. Um, he seems to be running a more traditional campaign than, than Donald Trump is. But uh, it, it, it feels like the, those two guys, the guys that are driving all the narrative, have no entrenched loyalty to the RNC the way that the rest of the folks do. Carly Fiorina, when she ran for Senate, took money from the RNC to go after uh, uh, Barbara Boxer. So she, I feel like she's got a little bit more loyalty there. But does it really only take two of these guys to upset the apple cart this much? I think it only takes one. I think I think part of the problem is, is and, and th- this is the truth, we had Sam Clovis on. Mm-hmm. And one of the things he said to us in the middle of the break is, you know what, it's a whole lot easier to be on the inside than it is the outside. Remember that? Yep. And the bottom line is money pours in if you're part of the if you're part of the machine. And you have two people, one doesn't need the machine, and two has raised money outside of the machine. And as far as I know, hasn't taken money from the machine. I could be wrong. Well, they both have. I mean, they, they both they both have been uh, soliciting contributions from lots and lots of folks. Like Donald Trump saying yeah, that he hasn't I, been, that's not true. Well, but, but they're 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 soliciting contributions. But they're not going, well, hey, listen, RNC. Hey, listen, Polk mm-hmm. County Republicans and Iowa Republicans. Give our campaign money. They're not doing that. Um, uh, Donald Trump isn't, and I'm fairly certain that Carson isn't. But everybody else is doing these giant, well, hey, you know, can the Republican National Committee help me? And the bottom line is, is, you know, when you're getting questions that are unfair or at least perceived to be unfair, and they're not really the same type of things. I mean, because you didn't, you, what did, you, you, what you basically you? didn't have Bernie say, well, hey, don't you think Hillary's an idiot? I mean, that's basically the questions that CNBC kind of started out with, a cult of personality thing. Mm-hmm. I just want, want the same questions asked for both sides of the aisle. I mean, figure out what questions you're going to ask, and then if CNBC does a Democratic debate, it's the same questions you ask the Republicans all the way down. Well, let me ask you this then. If you think that it's because there's some sort of liberal bias with these particular commentators, then why did Megyn Kelly, who's not a liberal person, and all the folks on Fox News do the same thing to these guys? Well, they didn't do the same thing to all of them. They did the same thing to the outsiders, right? And and then and part of the problem with, with Megyn Kelly, hold on, let me rephrase that. It's not Megyn Kelly's problem. Well, she was just the lead person, and I didn't she mean was to a, pick yeah, on her. But yeah, she's not. She's not. But what I said was well, yeah. the problem with Megyn Kelly. It really isn't the problem with Megyn Kelly. It was Trump being Trump. After that, he didn't like the question, so he went after her, and that's his style. And the problem is, is you know, I think the rest of the field feel like Fox News kind of stabbed them in the back, and they're getting kind of tired of these gotcha questions that they get. Because don't get me wrong. Democrats get them too, particularly Hillary, mm-hmm. right? But uh, whereas Hillary can just go, hmm, and the sound bites don't get repeated 400 times during a 20 minute segment. When a Republican. Because what she know, says is boring, though. That's the th- I mean, we talk about sound bites. When we talk about sound bites and answers to gotcha questions, it is a lot. And this is not necessarily a Republican Democratic thing. This is more of a, what sells in the in the TV space thing. But when Ben Carson comes out and talks about a Muslim shouldn't be president, that's a lot more, quote unquote, interesting to listen to than a long winding answer about two iPads and a and a. Hillary is boring. And that's the thing. It's like, that's why people get so frustrated. Things don't stick to the Clintons. Well, for Bill, it's because he's a master of this kind of stuff. Hillary's just boring. She's a, she's a boring lady. That's obsessed with policy. All she cares about is, is, is legislation and policy. And so her, she's like, she's a little bit, she's kind of a smarter John Kerry come to think of it. 
Well, that's not not as, not as a candidate. I'm not talking about as a candidate. Oh. She's running a better campaign than he ever could have. But as that's far true. as the way she talks, she's got that Senate speak down like a glove on her left hand that fits. Well, I don't know yes, that analogy that, is terrible, but that. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, uh, I agree, and and I I'm I for one I'm glad because I can't tell you how many times I told campaigns don't even go to the media, just focus on your social, just focus on social media, and so I'm hoping. Especially with, you know, my, because, you know, I know a lot of these guys and I see them a lot. And so I'm hoping finally my message is sinking in that they're really going like, well, we're done with the, with the big part, with the big thing. The problem that's going to really bite the Republicans in the butt is uh, the Univision also Mm -hmm. was canceled because they're, and I don't know how they're associated with NBC, but it was a package deal. And so I'm sitting there thinking the Republicans have to get that Univision thing back, you know, and then that's for people who don't know that's a Latin uh, TV station that's you know got all the really great uh, Telemundo. Well, it's not Telemundo, uh, but uh, telenovelas. I mean, well, if you want to, if you want a circus, Donald Trump walking onto that stage, that's a circus. Yeah, it, not, there won't be any, a single question not related to his stance on immigration. And, and that's true. Which, I, which I think, and see, that's sort of come back to the the, account, the comments you made, like. I mean, what 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 is your definition of an unfair question, right? Like that's and I think that I think that you and I not we don't necessarily disagree on on that there are questions that are unfair, but I I think we certainly disagree on what kinds of questions are unfair. Um, question: I think it's I think that uh, asking a female candidate for president or any office what she's going to do about her kids. I personally think that's an unfair question. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and that's and that's one Hillary got. Not, well, not Hillary, Hillary um, Car- Carly Hillary has gotten it before though. Yeah, and and had. Carly, I don't think the I don't know that Carly did. I don't or, recall that. or 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 well, Ms. Fiorina, I should is, say. You know, focusing on well, Sarah Palin and her wardrobe. I yep. think that was unfair. Um there sometimes they talk about Hillary's changing hairstyle. Mm-hmm. That's what that doesn't have any relevance. You know, so, so so those those, those kind of identity like, things, but yeah. but uh, is it unfair to ask them about a statement that they've made in the press? Is it unfair at a, in a debate setting about the economy to ask Donald Trump a question about the his his tax plan that everybody says you know it takes for everybody, but it'll still blow a huge hole in the budget and it'll be completely impossible to fix. Uh, or to make the numbers work is it unfair to ask him a question about that and then to follow up by saying that kind of contradicts things that you've said otherwise or to Ben because Ben Carson's a big one for that where he has to he says something and then has to walk it back clear or clarify it and say well go back to my original statement well Ben we just played it for you that ha- that's happened to him more than a few times is it unfair to ask him things about that that's and I, that's right because I think that's where a lot of the times that's where they get the most upset about well, you know, the the thing is is uh you know, Bernie and Hillary don't get those kind of questions. You know, they they generally, you know, they they get the well, well Black Lives Matter. We'll, we'll take talk about that because that's that's what I know. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, Hillary didn't do read. so well with that question. And she didn't, but you didn't see him pile on and keep driving at it and then not let it go and then the rest of it. You you didn't see that. Cuz part of it isn't just the question. A lot of it's, you know, the uh the uh the 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 chewing on it like a here's what i think it is this is what i think it is okay we got 30 seconds okay when they asked in the democratic debate do you want to follow up do you want to respond some of the times they said no i'm good they usually want to respond i'm not saying that but some of but some of the times they said no i'm good or when bernie says we don't care about your your emails anymore Right, addressing it head on and kind of cutting it off there. I have yet to see in the Republican debate any of these people not want to respond. Hey, well, do you want to respond to this? They're obsessed with the amount of time they get on TV, and it's ridiculous. That's why you go. We don't need TV anyway. We're gonna we're gonna. Are we done with this segment? Yeah. Yep. All right. So we're gonna come back with Ben Carson and how mm-hmm. he's starting. All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Next segment, we're going to start talking about Ben Carson and his organizational might. Versus Trump and his non-existent organizational might, uh, along with everybody else, because, you know, you hit it on the head. Jeb Bush has really shot himself a couple of times last couple of weeks. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back right after this break.